Alright, it's time for another math easy solution. Today we're going to discuss, well, just do example three now on the precise definition of a limit series here. This, I showed this in my earlier video, and I also want a couple examples, but I'll just go to example three. Just to illustrate it further, it's just a bit harder example now. Basically, the precise definition, I'll just recap before I get to it. Let f be a function defined on some open interval, meaning it doesn't have to equal at the endpoints. Then that contains the number a, except possibly at a, so it doesn't need to be defined, just the limit uh, as approaches it uh, has to be. Then we can say that the limit of fx as x approaches a is l, and we write it like this, limit x approaches a, fx equals l. If for every number epsilon, which is greater than zero, there's a number delta, which is also greater, th greater than zero, such that uh, the difference in here, f of x in the limit, is less than epsilon, and then whenever you have the difference from x to the a is less than uh, delta right here. You can see the video link below on precise definition of a limit for more info, and I'm not going to go over it too much. Okay, so now uh, example three basically says just prove that the limit uh, as x approaches three of x squared is equal to nine. And, and once again, like my other uh, examples, to prove it, well, we'll just use this definition to prove it. And all we have to do is just find this, basically, this uh, number, um, this number delta in terms of epsilon, because this epsilon is just for any number, so we just make it any number really small, greater than zero, if we could find this number, so we'll write it in terms of this. So now to get this, we just write the definition of a limit, but now we have a is equal to three, and our l is equal to nine right here, and our f of x, we, we know that's just x squared, so we'll go x squared minus nine, uh, and this one is, um, this is going to be epsilon. So whenever, I'll just put this arrow here. This is, we'll just say it's whenever. We'll just use it as that. And now we'll write it as x minus a, which is 3, is less than this uh, delta right here. So we got to find this delta. And so this one here, it's actually, this is a, this is a difference of uh, squares right here. You can see my video link below on basically more on this. Yeah, and what I mean by difference of, of squares, we could write this uh, this one right here as, well, absolute value of x minus 3, and then this is uh, it times it by x plus 3 right here, and we'll have an absolute value. Well, we, we could just simplify this further. We'll just, uh, we could, because we're going to get absolute value anyway when you're multiplying two numbers, it doesn't really matter what sign it is, so we'll just put these both as absolute values, absolute value of x minus 3 and x plus 3, because when you factor these out, well, I mean, when you expand these out, you're going to get this, I'm not going to go over this too much, but so I'll just watch this video link below on difference of squares. Now, this is going to be less than epsilon right here, because remember, I just want to try to get this x minus 3 by itself right here. And now, uh, to simplify this, my calculus book has a pretty clever way of doing this, and that's basically by saying, let's say x plus 3 is, uh, let's just say it's less than a constant c, and if, if we imp impose this on, it's just going to be less than a constant, uh, Then because we're going to be centered around 3, so we could actually find this constant, and I'll show you what I mean soon, but the idea of this, when we, ha when we do this, we'll, we can be able to do something like this, so our x minus 3, uh, yeah, times it by x plus 3, now we're going to have it going to be written as c, t less than c, times it by x minus 3 right here. And now if we also impose that this c times x minus 3 is less than our, our epsilon right here, so we're going to have c and x minus 3, uh, absolute value times it by together, it's less than our epsilon. Now if we divide c by both sides, we're going to get, now uh, this is going to be x minus 3, less than epsilon divided by c right here. And if we look at our definition, which we wrote here, so this is x squared minus 9 is less than epsilon whenever x minus 3 is less than our delta, which we have to find. And in this case, our x minus 3 is less than epsilon divided by c. Now, this is our delta right here. And now we can actually find this c value pretty easily because we're centered around 3. So we could, uh, if we just say, let's say our x is going to be less than, um, let's say less than 4 and g greater than 2 here. So it's centered around 3. Yeah, so centered around 3 and you can see it from the graph right here as x squared graph. So if we center it around this uh, 3 right here, so let's just say we're going to be somewhere in between here. So 2 and 4, let's say our x is going to be somewhere in between, either here or here. So if we, ha if we just say this, then we're going to have now uh, so now if we just add 3 to both sides, so our x plus 3, and now this is going to be less than 7, this is 3, 4 plus 3, 
and this is going to be 2 plus um, 3, then we're going to have, this is going to be 5, or 2 plus 3, yeah, so this is 5 right here, so x plus 3 is less than 7, so if we center it around here, we're going to get our c is equal to uh, 7 right here, or uh, that's equal to c, or if we center it, or let's say even closer than that, let's just say we center it around, uh, well, still around 3, so 3.0001, and now this is going to be now 2.99, uh, what is this, another 9. So now our C is going to be, well, X plus 3 now, absolute value. Is this going to be now just, just 6.0001? And this is going to be, uh, what is this, 5.999 right here. And our C, this is our equal to our C. So what I'm trying to say is we can find C. Or uh, if I write it like this, we could determine C based on how close we center around X equals 3 right here. So we know what C is, so if we know what C is now, so we've found this delta right here. Because that's all we have to do basically is find this delta, because this one's any number. If we have any number, we can determine this delta, and this basically proves our uh, limit here. And then we write it just uh, all together, x, x squared minus 9 is less than epsilon, whenever, so we'll put these two arrows just to signify that, whenever x minus 3 epsilon value is less than delta, which equals 2 epsilon divided by c, and we can, do, and we can find c based on whatever, however close we are here. So then this basically proves the limit. Yeah, this proves the limit uh, of x uh, approaches 3 of x squared equal and equals to 9 because this one could be any number. So we pick this really, really, really small. Then we're going to have this really, really small number divided by a known number right here. And this one, one interval is going to be also really small. So we're just going to be cl getting closer and closer. Also, all, all we're doing here is getting closer and closer to this right here. And that's just getting closer and closer to here. And basically, that's our limit. You see, uh, my other examples also illustrate something like this, similar. Well, this is just a more complex one. I'm going to go over some notes actually from this example. Yeah. So now, some important notes from this example, like I showed above, if having this c constant, etc. It's an ingenious way actually to, f to prove that the limit exists. But it's uh, like a, like like example showed. It's not always easy to prove the limit using the precise definition of a limit, especially compared to example two, which I showed earlier, which is pretty straightforward in determining the limit. But basically, but if we have actually a more complicated function such as this one, uh, this is uh, fx six x squared minus eight x plus nine all divided by two x squared minus one. This requires a great deal of ingenuity, and basically, it's yeah. Using the, if we use the precise definition, it's just going to be really really complicated, and we'll have to think outside the box to prove it. But fortunately, we don't actually need to prove it using the de precise definition. We can actually prove limits such as this one above using the limit laws, which I covered earlier. So make sure to watch those videos in the video link video links below. But all we need to do first is prove each limit law using the precise definition of a limit. And I will do this in my later videos right here. And so once we get those, we just apply these limit laws to easily prove all, uh, basically easily do the limit of all these and prove them. Well, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this uh, example here. Just It's a bit outside of the box thinking. So that's kind of what you have to do if we are just proving with the precise definition of a limit. Hopefully you learned a number. You can download these notes in the Dropbox link below and stay tuned for another math easy solution.